What is going on, citizens of the Accumulation Nation? It's your boy Silver Forever back with another tier ranking, but this time, instead of 99% silver, we are focusing on 90% silver. Yes, junk silver, constitutional silver, any coin that was minted in the United States within the 20th century in the 1900s that was made out of 90% silver. So that means that we are excluding things like the 35% silver war nickels, the 40% silver Kennedys in the latter half of the 1960s, any kind of silver proof coins or the Eisenhower dollars, anything like that is not included here. But we do have 12 coins, starting with the Barbers, going through the Morgans and the Peace dollars, dimes, half dollars, quarters, things of that nature. I just wanna give a quick shout out to the one, the only Silver Picker. When I was first even thinking about starting the channel, I came up with this idea for doing a tier ranking of various silver coins I had typed in tier rankings and in silver into YouTube and I came across one person who had done it before and that was silver picker just want to give credit where credit is due I am going to give you my rankings today now keep in mind my rankings for these have changed three times in the last 15 minutes so don't hold me to this you know a year down the road or even a month from now if you want to do your own tier ranking I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description below Low to this exact tier maker you can use my link all you need is an account on twitter and you can do it yourself feel free to use a screen recording and post your own tier ranking on youtube because if you think that my ranking be stankin show me what you think is a good ranking let's just dive right in and get started so right off the bat i'm just gonna let you guys know of course of course the mercury dime is s tier and for those of you who aren't familiar with these ranking systems, S tier is the highest. There's normally an F tier. I'm of the opinion that there is no such thing as F tier silver. Any silver is good silver, so I'm gonna leave it at the D here. But the S tier is the superb or the superior ranking. And so for me, I mean, look no further than my channel logo. It used to just be this Mercury Dime image. Now we've kind of updated a little bit, but you guys know that I love my Mercury's. I have it in copper, I have it in silver, I have it in gold now. And I'm sure that it comes as no surprise to any of you that I would put the Mercury Dime in the S tier. I think that it's a great option. First of all, it's fractional. So if you're buying junk silver by face value, right now people are paying about 20X face value for junk silver. You can either get 10 dimes or four quarters. You're paying the exact same amount, but the dimes are even more fractional. I think that that is just an advantage to hitting dimes over quarters. Now, of course, one potential disadvantage to something like a mercury dime is that they're gonna experience more wear because they are generally older coins than something like the more modern Roosevelt dimes. But a counter to that is the fact that there is no such thing as a non-silver mercury dime. There is a such thing as a nickel clad Roosevelt dime. And so if you're dealing with the uninitiated, they are much more likely to accept the notion that this is 90% silver and a little less likely to understand that the Rosies are actually 90% silver. And while we're talking about the Rosies, I might surprise a few of you by doing this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it in the D tier. Now I have plenty of Roosevelt dimes in my junk silver collection. I'm going to maybe surprise a few of you and I'm just actually gonna drop it right here in the C tier. And the reason that I'm putting these in the C tier is not just because there are many nickel clad dimes that may lead people to not recognize these as being silver, but if you're just buying random junk silver from an online dealer, for instance, or if you go into your LCS and just say, give me $10 face of junk silver, this is the coin that you are very likely to find the reason that it's not in D tier is because, well, I'm going to put the Washington Quarter in the D tier. These are both the coins that you're most likely to get when you are just purchasing random junk silver. They're arguably the most common. They are the least desirable. You know, the Roosevelt Times are a little bit less likely to experience wear in my experience than the Washington Quarters. Just the fact that the Washington Quarter has tons of nickel clad years in recent history, and there are really, really old Washington Quarters that have experienced a lot of wear. I just think that all of these things in combination lead the Washington Quarter to be the least desirable option for constitutional silver in the United States. And I think that that's borne out by the fact that the vast majority of the time when you're buying just random junk silver, you know, one time I bought a $50 bag of junk silver from an online dealer and it was all Washington quarters and it was about half 
1964 Washington quarter. So just kind of run of the mill, not very popular. I don't think you can go wrong with any of these options, but out of all of them, the Washington quarters are probably the least appealing to me. Now, what is a little bit more appealing? The peace dollar. The peace dollar is actually much more appealing to me. It's certainly not in the same class as the Washington quarter or the Roosevelt dime, but something to be conscious of with the peace dollar is that the peace dollar, the Morgan dollar, these have about 0.7735 troy ounces of silver in them in their pure state, you know, without any wear. Whereas a dollar face of something like dimes or quarters or even halves only has about 0.72 troy ounces of silver in it. 0.723 in its freshly minted state, you know, a lot of LCS owners will just factor it as 0.715 troy ounces per dollar face when they're doing calculations for circulated junk silver. So there is a slightly higher amount of silver in things like the peace dollar and the Morgan dollar, for instance. But what you'll find is that these aren't sold at face. Generally, let's say you're buying the rest of this junk silver at around 20X face, you're probably gonna be finding these Cull, Peace, and Morgan dollars in the $25 to $30 range. And so it's kind of a different type of clientele, especially when you're getting into the Morgan dollars, into the more numismatic. But for me, I just love the Peace dollar design. I love the obverse, I love the reverse. It's one of my favorite coin designs that there is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in the A tier. But while we're talking about dollars, I'm just gonna grab this Morgan dollar and I'll tell you, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. And I know that a lot of people are gonna disagree with me here, but hear me out. First of all, I'm just not that big of a fan of the obverse on the Morgan dollar. I know that's not a very popular opinion. I think the reverse is a little nicer. These just carry a much higher premium and that can be an advantage. Let's say that the price of silver were to drop very significantly and the melt value of them didn't really justify their purchase, well, maybe something like a Morgan dollar is actually going to retain its value as a numismatic coin a little bit greater than something like a Washington quarter or a Roosevelt dime, which is simply being stacked just for the silver weight alone. Another disadvantage of the Morgan dollar is that arguably out of every coin here, the Morgan dollar is the most likely coin to be counterfeited. So if you don't have really reliable means of ensuring that you're buying a legitimate product, there's a pretty solid chance that you're gonna come across a counterfeit Morgan in your life. And so you gotta really make sure that you're buying from reputable dealers, from LCS owners that have testing equipment. Be very conscious if you're trying to buy Morgan dollars on private sales, things like Facebook Marketplace or something, because there are plenty of fakes out there. And if you've been in the game long enough, you can probably recognize them, but there are some pretty solid fakes. So just be aware of that with the Morgan dollar. So let's start talking a little bit about half dollars. So we have three different half dollar options here, four actually, four different half dollars. We'll go ahead and go oldest to newest. How about that? So we're gonna start with the barber half dollar. Of course, these are all the barbers down here. I do have the obverse for the dime and the reverse for the quarter and the half dollar. These are kind of hard to distinguish from one another. So I wanted to make it as easy as possible for the viewer and maybe for any of you who are actually going to be doing this tier ranking on your own just for fun or for actually publishing your own video on YouTube. These half dollars, I have to say I've rarely encountered a barber half in a junk silver bin. But if I did, I'd probably pick it up every time. I mean, these are pretty rare. You'll find that the barbers have an insane amount of wear on them. If they don't, then they're basically numismatics. But if I was to find a barber half, I would definitely scoop it up. I don't think we need to talk about these too much. They're pretty rare. I'm just gonna drop it in the B tier for now and leave it at that. But as we move on to the walking Liberty half, I gotta tell you the first time that I ever did this ranking, I put it in the C tier. And I discussed it with a friend and he basically freaked out. Um, he is a huge fan of the Walking Liberty. And you know, I think I've just kind of been soured by the American Silver Eagle recently. And this obverse just reminds me of the American Silver Eagle. But the reverse is, is truly spectacular. I love the design of the Eagle on the reverse. I think that these are big favorites among the community. And that's always something that you have to consider too, is it's not just about you and what you like, because at the end of the day, most people are going to eventually be selling these coins. So if there's a higher demand for something like a walking Liberty half, it might justify a higher tier ranking, even if there is more wear on it than something like, let's say a 19. 64 Kennedy half. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this one in the A tier just to appease the viewers. But let me know if you disagree. Leave a comment down below. Let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna be talking about the Barber Quarter. You know, this is another one that I just basically never see. If I do see it in the junk drawer, I'll go ahead and pick it up. But these have an unreal amount of wear. You know, quarters, dimes, these things were heavily, heavily circulated. People weren't necessarily thinking that these were gonna be holding some numismatic value in the future. They weren't necessarily thinking that, oh, maybe one day the coins aren't even gonna be made out of silver. These were constantly exchanging hands, being used in gumball machines or, you know, whatever, whatever constitutes circulation. It's very obvious when you see barbers in a junk bin that uh, these things are heavily circulated. And so I think I only have one of these in my entire collection. Not really much to speak of. The barbers are really hard for me to do these rankings on. I'm just gonna drop it in the C tier and move on, guys. Do the barber dime. Now, I'm a huge fan of dimes. I'm always picking up dimes. Even if I stop at the LCS and I'm not gonna spend a lot of money, I'm just kind of like, you know what? Give me a dollar face of dimes. I'll spend 20 bucks. Hey, you know, I'm here, I might as well. And if I see a barber, I might pick it up, but any barber dime that I've gotten has just been wafer thin. I mean, this thing, it's surprising, honestly surprising. When you weigh them, you realize, okay, most of it is still here, but when you look at them or when you stack them, it just looks like the wear has totally destroyed its value. And obviously I'm not completely basing this tier ranking just on the actual silver weight of each of these coins. If I were, the barbers would be on the bottom every single time, but, you know, maybe one day that will be more important. Maybe when it comes to the point where silver has skyrocketed in price and there are people out there who are simply just melting down all the silver and they're actually doing it by weight, maybe it will matter more. But nowadays, people are still calculating prices based on face value. They're not considering the difference between older circulated coins and newer uncirculated coins. So for that reason, I'm just gonna go ahead and consider it like the Barber Quarter and I'm gonna drop this Barber Dime in the C tier. Now, the Standing Liberty Quarter, this is kind of a mixed bag. You know, a lot of people like this one, maybe other people not so much. I'm not a huge fan of this coin. I do think that there are distinct advantages and that people will recognize it as an older silver coin. It might not experience as much overall wear as the barbers, although it's pretty obvious based on the way most of these coins look that the features are really worn down, but I'm just not a huge fan of the Standing Liberty. It's just not for me, you know? You are completely entitled to disagree, but for me, I'm just gonna drop it in the C tier. It's average, it's run of the mill. That's what C's are for, right? Let's talk about the Kennedy halves. Again, remember, I'm not considering 40% Kennedys. We're only considering the 90% coins here. And so there was only one year that these Kennedys were made in 90% and that was 1964. Now, of course, disadvantages to this day, the Kennedy half is still being produced in nickel clad. Maybe everybody doesn't recognize that, but one of the big advantages about these 64s is that so many of them were retained basically just in their uncirculated state. So when you buy a roll of Kennedy halves that are in 90%, you better believe that they're gonna be really, really close to the original weight in silver. And so that's a distinct advantage, I think, over some of these other coins. I really vacillated about this one, but we're gonna go ahead and drop it into the B tier, which leaves old Benjamin Franklin. And for those of you who know how I feel about fiat, I much prefer this Benjamin Franklin than the one on the $100 bill. There's a lot of sentimentality to this. Everybody's gonna have a lot of subjective influence on their own tier rankings. And for me, the Benjamin Franklin half, it really represents a lot more to me than just a simple junk silver coin. You know, this was the first lesson that I ever learned about 90% silver. It was from a, a grandfather of mine who basically taught me that pre-1964, these coins were different. There was something fundamentally different about it. He would do coin roll hunting, and it never really occurred to me until later how interested I was in that. But it's not just about the obverse here. The reverse is great with the bell. There is a lot of open space in the field, but I kind of like it on this coin. Some of my favorite coins are Benji halves with good toning. I don't know, I just have a lot of good things to say about the Benjamin Franklin half. Of course, there's none of them that have been done in nickel clad. People can distinguish them. They're not really heavily worn, you'll find. 
I just think that this is a great coin and I think it deserves S tier status, folks. So I'm dropping it in the S tier. And you know what? If you disagree with my rankings, that's totally fine. I hope that you enjoyed this video and be sure to click that link in the description if you wanna make your own tier ranking. No matter how you stack, having silver is better than not having silver. And that is my unprofessional opinion. I hope that you guys have a great day. Remember to keep accumulating silver forever.